Hello everyone and welcome to Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. I'm your host Robin Norgren and you have joined in on a series called Love Poems from God. We're looking into the 12 sacred voices or I should say 12 of the sacred voices from the East and the West and today we will begin with our study on Rumi. So many of us have heard of Rumi. I wanted to take a moment to give a little more context behind who uh, this person is. So let me start with a quote. On a day when the wind is perfect, the sail just needs an open, needs to open, and the world is full of beauty. Today is such a day. Jalaluddin Rumi is considered one of the greatest poets known to history. His influence throughout the Islamic world for over 700 years and more recently in the Western countries is astounding. He is currently one of the most widely read poets in the English language. Rumi was born September 30th, 1207 in Bakal, Afghanistan which was at that time considered the eastern edge of the Persian Empire. When he was about eight years old, his family was forced to flee from the invasion of the Mongol armies of Genghis Khan. They settled in Konya, Turkey, where Rumi remained for the rest of his life. His father, father Bahaladin Walad, a scholar and a mystic, became the head or the Sikh of a Dervis college a divinity school. Rumi succeeded to this position upon his father's death and often would read to his students from his father's mystical diary. There are several accounts of the momentous event in Rumi's life, his transformation, which began in 1244 when he met Shams. Shams, a wandering dervish from Tabiz, was on a quest for the one spiritual companion to whom he could bequeath his spiritual legacy. He wove a path through vagabonds and street people, always slipping away at the slightest hint of admiration. One account of their meeting describes Rumi reading from the Marif while sitting in a public square in Konya. Sham suddenly appeared from among the crowd and grabbed the diary, as well as other sacred texts, and threw them into a nearby fountain. Rumi was aghast, fearing his precious books would be ruined. Shams then retrieved the books, showing Rumi they were perfectly dry, and then giving Rumi the choice between scholarship through text or sacred, living sacred experience. Rumi chose the latter, suddenly realizing that he had come face to face with the doorway to God. Thus began a relationship of divine union. Shams, sensing their indefinable association, was causing jealousy among the Rumi students. Suddenly, dis- and he suddenly disappeared as swiftly as he, as he had first appeared. It has been said that this was when Rumi first began expressing himself through poetry, expressing the pains of separation from Shams, as well as the ecstatic love he had been initiated into. He also began to blissfully dance, to whirl, and is known as the founder of the Whirling Dervishes. Rumi sent his son to bring Shams back to him. They were reunited and had almost four more years together, during which time Shams lived in Rumi's home. One night in 1248, Shams disappeared, never to be seen again. He was probably murdered by one of Rumi's jealous students. Rumi was inconsolable and began wandering, searching for any trace of his friend, who was all in all to him. Finally, he realized that his beloved Shams was within him. He felt it was Shams who was writing the poetry and even entitled his collected poems, The Works of Shams of Tabriz. This collection contains some 40,000 verses, which he spent the last 12 years of his life transmitting to his closest student. And there was another 25 to 30,000 verses found in his Mathnani, He died on December 17, 1273. Some say Rumi would not have gifted such an enormous literary treasure to the world without Shams, his teacher. 
and a sacred longing to unite with the hidden that took place when Shams disappeared. But this is exactly the role of a master, to create an intense desire for union with the beloved. And where union happens, an atomic mystical power is released that can be directed toward humanity. Rumi says to us in a poem, love is the cure for your pain will keep giving birth to more pain until your eyes constantly exhale love as effortlessly as your body yields its scent. Love is the, ens the essence of Rumi. Love became his very being. Love is the impetus of all his poetry. Rumi sings fantastic promises that do not disappoint the sincere student. Stand with dignity in the magnificent current of my words and they will carry you into God's arms. I leave you with one poem. It's called, Where Am I Going? Where am I going on this glorious journey? To your house, of course. Thanks so much for stopping us by. Make sure and share this with those who you feel might benefit from it. And as always, you can subscribe in any of your favorite podcast venues.